Okay, in this lesson we're going to take a look at another method of doing the twists from the last lesson that we were looking at. Um, here, if we look at the forearm, we twist this way, the joints aren't moving, we twist this way, the twist moves a little bit. Um, the way it should be, and then we move this way, it doesn't move at all, we move this way, it doesn't move at all, so that's good. But if we look at the elbow, it's a little bit different. We twist this way, and it twists the way it's supposed to. But if we twist this way, you can see that we have some rotation there. And if we twist this way, we can see that we get some rotation here. So we want to prevent um, that rotation. And this method makes it a little bit more unstable with the um, constraints that we have. Um, so it works perfectly fine to do this twist right here. But the other two directions that we may need to bend in, and with this character, we're probably not going to bend the elbow this way, so that's not too big of an issue. But if we do bend it this way, which we should need to, it is causing issues on this joint. So we can go through and take the constraints off of this and build it together through direct connections. So that's what we're going to try and do right now. Um, I'm going to select these three joints and then push F. That will frame or focus those elements on the outliner. And you have to be have your cursor right over the outliner and push F. Then we can expand each one of these and we should see the constraints there. And let's delete those. Okay, so now if we do the twist here, we should see that those twist joints don't work at all. And then if we rotate this way, it doesn't twist, so it's all completely disconnected. Um, I'm going to set up the joints slightly differently than what they are right now. So I'm going to put three inside of two and two inside of one just so that it's um, directly in line with the parenting chain here. I'm just not going to connect it to the elbow all the way down. Okay, and then let's check the rotations here. So that has a rotation, this has a rotation, and this has a rotation. Um, and if we look at this the way the um, joints are supposed to be aligned the way we want it, it's not going the right way. If we freeze transformations, it resets it that way, which is not what we want. Um, let's zero it out. And we can see that it goes back in the same direction as the rest of the arm. So that's fine now. And then let's do this one and reset it to zero. And let's double check that all of them are fine now. That one's flipped, this one's flipped, but this one's fine. So, let's look at the attribute editor really quick. Joint orient, it's zeroed out right here. So what we can do is go to um, skeleton, orient joint, and let's say if we apply that, the X is going in the right direction, the Z is still going the wrong direction. It should be aiming the same way as these joints are. So we can do negative Y. And let's apply that. So now that is matching here. Let's look at this one, that one is matching. And then let's look at this one. That one is matching. So they are all matching and they're moving correctly. And let's just double check really quick that the rotations are all at zero. OK, so that's looking good. I am going to save this. 
And then let's go into the um, outliner here. Window, and we need the node editor. And it's loading up stuff that we have selected, which is fine, but we're going to just want specific things. So I'm going to clear everything, this button here, with the little box and kind of the starburst that says clear graph. That's what we're going to do. Move it out of the way. Normally for me, I have two monitors, so I would put it on the other window. But just to make it a little bit easier for you guys to see, we're going to put it lower here. I'm going to select these three joints because that's what we're going to work with. And we're also going to work with the elbow. And then I am going to go here to the graph. And click this button, button that says add selected nodes to graph. There we go. We have all three of those nodes. <clears throat> so we're going to connect the rotation of this into the rotation to each one of these. I'm going to click tab and we're going to need a multiply divide node. So I just start typing out multiply and then we get the multiply divide node here. And we're going to need three of them. Multiply divide tab, start typing out multiply. Now we got the third one. There we go. So we have three notes. So here I'm going to actually let's not do that because it's a little bit long, but we can go here, click on the dot and we want to go to the rotate X. So we're going to go down. Oh, I don't see it. So we're going to have to expand it. Rotate here. And we don't need XYZ, we just need X. So we're going to take the rotate and connect it to the input 1X. And we're going to do that with each one of these. Input 1X. Oh, sorry. We're doing the input here. We need to connect from this side. So we're going to connect here to here, input one X and that way we should be able to get multiple of them. And then I'm going to select this because we don't need that. Let's delete that. And okay, I'm going to start that from the beginning. I'm so sorry. Let's go rotate to rotate. It should be from this side, input 1x. There, that looks correct. We don't need that unit conversion right now. We go over here. And then input 1x. Multiply divide. Connect that here. Great. And we need another multiply divide. I lost the other one. There we go. And we're going to connect the channel here. One X. Perfect. So um, just like with what we did with the other twists, we want each one of these to be progressively more as we rotate. So we're going to connect this into the rotate X for each one of these. This is the shoulder. And the multiply divide node, I'm going to select that. And let's go to the attribute editor. So we're going to take whatever the rotation currently is and multiply it by 0.25. So that's going to make it um, a fourth of the size of the rotation. And that's going to go into the shoulder. So we could take the output of X, connect that into the rotate X. 
There we go. So we can see that the connection was built there. Let's move these up here so that we can see. Maya likes to try to organize it for you. Okay, so then on this one, this is going to be multiplied by 0.5. So it's going to be half the rotation. And then we're going to take the output X and connect that into the elbows twist for the rotate X. So we'll bring the unit conversion back over here. And we could see that it was connected here. Then on this one, it's going to be multiplied by 0.75. And then we'll create, connect that into the output X to the twist for the rotate X. There we go. So that should be the connection. I'm going to minimize this. And let's double check it here. So if we rotate in this direction, we should see no rotations at all, which is great. This connection no rotations at all. But if we do this one, we should see the twist, which we are not seeing. So let's double check why. So if we rotate this, that is rotating the control. That's good. And let's check this. Somehow the rotate X connection, it might have been from something I did earlier, got disconnected. Oh, because I connected the, um, in the node editor. Let me open up the node editor. When I accidentally earlier connected the output X side um, to the multiply divide node rather than, or yeah, bringing in the inputs rather than the outputs to the um, multiply divide node that broke the connection there. So what we can do is say that this controls the target, this is the object to be constrained, and then um, we can do a orient constraint on this, or we can just go and rebuild this constraint. So it could go um, to the elbow, expand the elbow, delete that parent constraint. So now we should see that there's no constraint there. So that this will be a little bit cleaner. Target object to be constrained, deselect the mesh. Um, then go to constraint. Oops, what's going on there? Go to constraint, parent, option box and then these um, are all fine we want the X and Y we don't necessarily need to maintain offset let's apply that is perfect everything is lined up still so now let's test those twists we got the bend here we got the bend here, it doesn't twist at all, but this one, it does twist. So that's exactly what we need for this to work. And this one should still work. Let's double check it. This twist works. This doesn't modify anything. This doesn't modify anything, so we are good. All right, so this is the second way to do a twist that's a little bit more stable for the upper arm. All right. That's it for this video. We'll see you guys in the next one.